Show, and today I've got uh, with me the 2007 and 2008 Colts Premiership coach for Cheltenham, Phil Sparrow. Welcome, Phil. Thanks very much, Wayne. Thanks for having me. And Phil is also the um, 2009 Colts Interleague coach uh, just last weekend, and it's just great to have you uh, on board today, Phil. Thank Pleasure. you for coming in. Um, just with regards to the, uh, the game last Saturday, it was a pretty uh, hotly contested game and uh, although we only went down by the, a very small margin, we're in front for most of the game. You're pretty happy with the uh, performance of the boys? Oh look, it was great Wayne, uh, to think where we've come from a couple of years back uh, when we didn't have Colts and uh, makeshift competition last year and now developed into full-blown competition with 11 sides. and. And to see those boys go out there in the first year of the full Southern Footy League Colts competition and play as well as they did, I just felt it was a landmark day for the league. Um, those boys are the future of the league and, and to see the way they played was just sensational. As you said, we led all day and went down virtually on the last kick of the game, which was uh, terribly disappointing at the time, but when I reflect on it since then, I couldn't be happier with the whole day and the effort of the boys and just terrific. And, and Phil, your support crew, you had a couple of the coaches of the Colts supporting you as well? Oh, outstanding, mate. They were Paul O'Toole and Nick Emstrom from St Kilda City, Paul from Sky, of course. Both very knowledgeable football blokes and their contribution at training was just sensational with some of their drills. You were down there and had a look and yeah, you know, these top quality stuff, great footy blokes, both great blokes and dedicated to the Colts comp and absolute pleasure to work with those guys. Phil, it was noticeable for me, I attended two of the sessions, that not only did you bond uh, with the players, but the coaching staff bonded extremely well and worked as a very cohesive unit, which was, I think, evident on the day as well, very well coordinated work for each other. Oh, absolutely. Like The boys, uh, the two other coaches, both had particular roles. Uh, Nick was looking after the midfield uh, That's right. rotations and so on, which was a job in itself with so many talented you know, midfielders in the team. And Paul was getting a good focus on the defence and Nick Insel, their gym and selectors, was having a look at the forwards and, and I just oversaw the whole thing. And as, as for the bonding, um, I said to the boys at our first training night, uh, I don't believe we're going to make much headway with improving your skills in the three week right. period. Probably not going to improve your fitness that much, but where we could make some real inroads was how we came together and bonded as a team. And to see the way the boys took that on board the first night of training, the way they got around and introduced themselves to each other and the spirit and enthusiasm, it was just uh, sensational. Mm -hmm. And they built on that as they went. And as I said to them, I think that's the sort of a situation in, in that whole interleague campaign over three weeks or so. They can make mates for life out of that. Indeed. They'll have a friendly rivalry with boys they play against. And, yes. And I don't think it'll be too long before a lot of those blokes become teammates in the senior interleague side. So. Indeed. Phil, one of the things that I was looking for on the day was to compare our standard against, you know, an existing um, Colts competition in the, in the Riddle and District uh, League. And overall, we'll, we'll you know, roll out there, won't we? We were. I, um, I actually thought to myself during the training period, um, just observing our boys at training and you, you saw them, the way they train, the skills and the, how the footy never mm. touched the ground, obviously. Mm. And I thought, I don't know anything about the standard up at Riddell, but gee, they'll have to be a good team mm. to be this mob. Mm. And uh, to their great credit, um, they were. And uh, they, they really played well at Riddell. We thought we had them a couple of times, but they just kept coming. They wouldn't go away. and to the point where they sneaked up and just got us on the last kick. But they did. I think the future of both leagues is in great hands when you yeah. look at the standard. Like Indeed. It really was a top class game of free. It was. Mm. Um, just for the record viewers, uh, the uh, Riddle and District Football League scored 10-10-70 to the Southern Football League 10-6-66. Uh, the goal kickers for uh, the mighty Southern Football League was Tim Ford with four, Matthew Wilcox with two goals, Max Bruin with one, Josh Bennett with one, Phil Ball with one, Kieran Knox with one. And uh, the best players uh, during the course of the day were uh, Reese Yoakam, who won the medal for uh, the best player in the Southern Football League Colts, Max Bruin, uh, Kieran Knox, Travis Baldock, Phil Ball, and also uh, Tim Ford, who played up forward, um, which was a, a really good sign for the Southern Football League, um, Phil, with regards to the Colts, only its second year in, probably the only, or the first year where we've been fully fledged a legitimate under 18 or under 18 and a half competition. 
to go up against a, an ex established league was uh, very pleasing to see. We were not only competitive, pretty stiff to lose, I would have thought. Very stiff to lose right on the death knock yeah. like that one. It was uh, tough at the time. But. Yeah, it would have been pretty hard to swallow because for those that weren't there at Macedon, beautiful Macedon, great backdrop with the trees right around the ground, cars around the ground and then the mountains just there. Very and cold Macedon. Very too, cold Macedon, Phil, yeah, 10 degrees like tall. Those Southern Footy League jackets are nice and warm. Yeah, they, they uh, come up a treat, don't they, the Southern Football League. Um, jackets good. proudly supported by uh, Footy Pack, which is terrific. Um, and it was it was a terrific um, setting for a terrific game, played in extremely good spirits. The umpires, uh, Simon Cormie from the Southern Football League, did a terrific job. And uh, I'd just like to go on record uh, in thanking Mick Insel from the, the board for being chairman of the selectors, Phil, of course, um, Nick Hemstrom, Paul O'Toole, Lee Roy and Rocky, the trainers, were enormous as well. And numerous Lloyd Griffiths on the day to, in his assistance as well, which was great. Um, also, uh, there was the uh, netball that was played at 12 o'clock and uh, the Riddle District Football and Netball uh, combination defeated the Southern Football League, represented by the Springvale District Netball Association, uh, 59 to 26, although we did score the first six goals of the, the game, which was terrific. It was about 6-2. About uh, the best player on court was named uh, Jaden Aaron, which was, which was good, and Jay played a terrific game. And although the margin was significant, it's our first outing together and we're looking forward to improving on that. Um, following the, the Colts, we then had the uh, Sooners, um, who defeated the uh, Riddle and District Football League by three points, 8 11 59 to Riddle and District 8 8 56. Goal kickers for Southern Football League were Darren Walsh with three, Adam Cole with two, Big Dominic Dunn with one, Gab Fasala with a winning goal, and also Jared Rafferty kicked one. The best players were Jared Rafferty. Peter McCoolia, great in the centre. Ash Roberts, the captain. Jay Bruno from St Kilda City put on a display early. Rick McConkey also from St Kilda City. And Chris Morgan uh, was an extremely good player uh, when he was rucking. So it was a great result for the Southern Football League and I would have thought too that we were probably the better team from the majority of the day um, and uh, just scraping home by the, the small margin of three points with a great goal by Gab Fasalo. What did you think of that game, Phil? Oh, look, it was very difficult conditions. Uh, the ground was fairly heavy underfoot when the cold started and then with the, the rain coming down and the slippery conditions uh, made it very tough. Uh, I was very impressed with uh, Dogger Cole from Cheltenham, out of the hole, he, yeah. a terrific little player and, and uh, yeah, very, very good game, mm. good quality game in the conditions and uh, the boys did very well to get over the line. And they did, yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't quite grab the double, but hopefully next year we can rectify that situation one. Well it is Phil, it's a two year contract so we play them again next year, the Ridland District and, that, and we'd just like to also extend our uh, warm appreciation to the Ridland District Football League for their hosting the event. Scott McCartney, the General Manager, did an enormous job and the whole league were fantastic on the day. Um, yeah, Phil, this year after two years being very successful uh, with Cheltenham and coaching the Colts to two premierships, the first in 2007 with the MPNFL and last year in its first year the Southern Football League winning the Premiership. This year you're not coaching, you're taking more of a junior development role with Cheltenham. Can you elaborate a little bit about that role? Yes, I, um, I spoke with the club and felt it was time I stepped aside because I had a philosophy that we're trying to build a relationship with our junior club, the Cheltenham Panthers, and to me the, the logical coach each year would be the under-17 coach from the Panthers yes. who brings it who comes across with the boys. Mm -hmm. and, Mm. We went down that path and we actually put in place a co-coaching arrangement with uh, Ian Harper, who right. coached our second mm. Cockatoos team last year, yeah. and Paul Coughlin, who coached last year's under-17s. And uh, Ian mm. has recently uh, stood down from that co-coaching position to take up a player's role with our Club 18 mm. side. So okay. that's, that's an okay. interesting development. So Very I'm back on the bench as assistant coach now. Look, it, it's worked well. Mm. Our team struggled early because the mm. boys didn't have much of a pre-season and they they came from last year playing in second division under 17s where That's they right. were down near the, the bottom of the ladder and mm. and to see where they are now, probably sitting in about sixth place I think and with a fair chance of uh, having a crack of making the finals. Uh, Final five. Mm. The boys have really worked hard since the season started and their skills have improved and uh, they're starting to really uh, serve it up to some of the top sides now. And,